Well, I had another successful deer season. Uh, luckily, this year, since we don't have any other way to get meat, so I was really glad. Uh, I was able to get two deer, a buck and a doe. And uh, so I'm in the middle of processing, and now I'm here cleaning up my deer uh, stand so that it uh, can sit empty for the winter. Um, but uh, yeah, I just wanted to kind of walk through the process of how I was able to get the deer and what I did with them uh, to save the meat uh, so we can do it all next year. So stay tuned. deer season which is one of my few ways that I can now get meat uh, seeing as we can't just pop over to the grocery store and buy anything so I am out and um, been out here since sunrise I've already seen seven does but I'm gonna wait um, to shoot a doe or a female deer um, at least for a day or two um, just because it only takes one buck to impregnate a whole bunch of does. But um, a doe is only going to produce one or two deer every year. So, might as well leave them alone if I can help it. Time to warm up a little lunch. seen plenty of does and one buck, but the buck didn't come this way. So now I'm just having a bit of lunch, taking a break, looking forward to the afternoon. This was surprisingly not as hard as I expected to bring in a deer on the back of a bike. Glad to know I can do it without a truck, if need be. Deer hair is one of the best insulating animal hairs. It's hollow um, and it's really warm. And so right now all the body heat from this deer is stuck inside. So I need to get this hide off of him as soon as I can and uh, open up his chest cavity so he can cool down um, so the meat can, um, can hang and, and uh, season a little bit. I've been hunting deer since I was a little kid. I've been helping butcher deer since before that. It's a big part of growing up and getting most of our meat. Well, a lot of our meat, I don't know if most, but quite a lot of our meat from venison from my great uncle's property. It's quite the family tradition. And then when I left northern Minnesota, went to college and other things, people kind of look down their nose at hunting and, and wild game and, and I didn't do it for years and not, not 
not because of peer pressure, just I didn't have the time or capacity. I didn't have a vehicle. I lived in a place I didn't have access to hunting land. And just and I just never got a chance to do it. And then when we moved to somewhere where I could go hunting, we started talking about buying only grass-fed organic beef from, you know, farmers we could meet, that sort of thing. Looking at a more ethical way to source meat because of the just craziness that is industrial meat production. We wanted to get a more, a healthier, happier animal sort of thing. And uh, so I floated the idea to Lauren, well, what if I start hunting? Because even with the, the violence of shooting a deer and butchering it myself, this animal has had a much happier life, I would imagine, than any cow or um, any domesticated animal. Um, even those with the best life. I think this deer probably had a better life than our chickens, and our chickens have a pretty darn good life. And I try and do my best to kill them quickly and cleanly, reduce the suffering as much as I possibly can, try not to take chancy shots, running, anything like that. This, this deer, for example, probably died within 10 seconds of getting hit because it went through both of his lungs and his diaphragm. So he essentially couldn't breathe almost instantly. And he didn't, wasn't able to run away or anything. So I feel good about that. Doesn't always go that cleanly, but that's what I, that's what we try for. So a deer like this, which is probably judging from the horns a year and a half old. So he would have been a fawn not born not last spring, but the spring before. Maybe, maybe a year before that. It's hard to tell sometimes. Um, we're probably going to get, oh, anywhere between 40 and 60 pounds of meat, depending on how, how closely I clean. And this year I'll probably be cleaning them pretty close because we want as much meat as we can get, even if it's meat that we end up giving to the dog without access to dog food. It'd be nice to get her some more protein and us as well, of course. We're just about out of meat from last year because we don't, don't, can't go to the grocery store and buy meat. This is it. It's like taking off the world's most stubborn fur coat. Hit him in the back. He was 200 yards away. So I had, so I aimed actually a little high, but looks like I didn't need to do that. I thought I'd hit him in the lungs because he went down so quick, but you can see the steam. I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but the steam coming out of him will only increase once I get the chest cavity open. A lot of fat on his back. We may try and render that and make soap, actually. Something we have to look up on, on the internet to see if that's even possible, but deer soap. Not a huge deer. Not small either, though. It's a medium. Now I gotta wash the hair off him and get the limbs off. Uh, but otherwise, he is just gonna sit. I'm gonna open up his chest cavity here. So you can just see the steam. I don't know if you can, but the steam is just rising out of him. So I wanna get this meat down as cool as possible, as quickly as possible, so that it'll be uh, good to eat. Well, it's now a few days later, um, and the deer's been hanging up, and so now I'm going to uh, basically uh, cut it up into bits, and I've got some bins over here for saving fat, saving hamburger, and then saving uh, stew meat, um, and then also saving uh, roasts and things like that. So I'm, right now I'm just pulling off chunks of fat. Deer fat, unfortunately, yeah. Isn't as delicious as uh, pig or beef fat. Uh, never mind the boy there. Um, so instead of using it to flavor things like sausage, I'm using it. Uh, I'm giving it to Lauren after I render it to turn into soap. Um, she'll use the fat to turn into soap. And for my butchering, I'll just use a fillet knife. Um, that's all I really need. Um, so first I'm going to take off this elbow, 
So get him right behind here. So I'm not going to make an instructional video of how to do this. Uh, there are much better videos out there for people who know a lot more about what they're doing than I do. Um, I'll link to the, the best one I know of. Um, I learned how to uh, butcher uh, the basics I learned from my dad uh, growing up. This used to be uh, Sunday afternoon, the end of a deer hunting weekend. We'd uh, cut up and grind whatever uh, whatever meat we had gotten that uh, weekend. Usually watching the Vikings game, but now I live in Wisconsin, so I got to keep that a little quiet. And here now is a nice small roast with some excess meat or excess uh, fat on it that I'll save for for soap making. So that'll get ground up into hamburger. This bucket, when I'm not actively cutting up a deer, will go outside because it's a refrigerator temperature outside, which helps me because I don't have a lot of refrigerator capacity. So having, being able to use the outdoors as a fridge is super useful. I've had the deer hanging up in the, um, in the garage for a few days now. And now we'll go get another shoulder. All right, time to get the second shoulder off. And like I said, the shoulder isn't really held on by anything other than muscle and muscle and tissue. So it's really just pulling the shoulder away and cutting the connect connected tissue. I'm going to take this whole deer apart with a four inch boning knife. There it goes. That's it. space at a minimum, um, I'm canning the stew meat. And the reason for doing that is stew meat's going to get cooked anyway, so I might as well cube it and cook it now. And then we can add it to chilies and other delicious foods. Um, deer meat has to be canned in a pressure canner for 75 minutes for pints at 11 pounds of pressure. So, these lids on here. They cook. You don't have to add any juices. It's just cut up venison um, and it cooks. It creates its own juices and uh, stews in it, it literally stews in its own juices. And then they're shelf stable uh, for a year so I can pop them on the shelf instead of taking up freezer space with nine more pounds of venison. And here we have our pressure cooker underway. We're at about uh, 12 pounds. It's been an hour, so another 15 minutes, and then these will be done. Uh, but nine pints, nine pints of stew meat. And then in here I have all the deer fat, and that's rendering down. So put in a half a cup of water, I'm boiling that. It drops all the fat out, and hopefully I'll get a big, fat, thick layer of fat that I can pour through some cheesecloth, and then Lauren can make some soap out of this. Never had deer soap before. Supposedly it actually makes pretty good soap. Because that, that's good because deer fat is basically useless for anything else. You can't eat it. It tastes, it coats your mouth with this oily feeling. It's not very pleasant. So it's not a great eating fat, unfortunately. Um, so yeah, uh, I think fat is really going to be the choke point of our, of our, uh, of food, 
of all the foods we get, we're gonna run out of fat for cooking. And that's what's really gonna get us. If we had dairy, we could make butter. Um, if we had the equipment, we could make um, seed oil. We don't have enough seeds, so yeah. That's gonna be our big, our big problem. And then over here, I've got the handy KitchenAid. Um, and I've been uh, grinding up some, grinding up some hamburger. So let's do some more of that. slices it um, and pushes it through a little bit of a, a, a gate, kind of like this. This is the fine, I've got the course on there, I'll run it through once, chill the meat again, and then run it through on the fine setting and then uh, package it up. After about 45 minutes, I've got just little uh, crispies there, and then almost three pounds of fat, which will get turned into soap, like I've said. So we'll wait for that to cool. I'm trying to get just a little bit more fat out of there. I've added a little more water, um, which steams it and all the fat drops out. I pour it through the colander, and then I pour the fat right into these cans. Mmm, deer fat. Rendered deer fat and coconut oil. Is that right? Yes. We're making, or we... Lauren's making soap. Ah, that's not terrifying. <laughs> Safety first, huh, Professor? Yes, wear gloves. So what's being poured in the lye is being poured into the lye into the oil. Uh -huh. the lye into the liquid, not the other way around. It may fade a little bit, but... Oh, oh no, oh no, oh no, 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 I've no, never made a mess! Crisis averted, we found a cap. A lot of soap. Yeah. How many bars will that be? Depends on the size of the bar you want. Okay. <laughs> I don't know, I'd say it's probably... 12 to 15. Ooh. Right. Well, I'm quite literally back to the grind. I'm working through about 27 pounds of meat and fat uh, that I'm grinding from chunks into uh, small bits. It's been freezing outside all night, so it's nice and cold, not quite frozen, but dang near. Um, and so I'm gonna run it through on my thick die um, and then pop it in the freezer to cool back down before I stuff it into casings. All right, now that I have a bowl full, I'll take my pan out of the uh, freezer, I've got three of them in there, three big pans. I'm work with, I'd rather do a couple of smaller pans rather than one big pail, because then when I'm working with these later, I can only have a little bit out of the freezer at a time rather than letting it all warm up together. So now this goes in the freezer. Empty, empty. I'm gonna give this thing a quick clean. 
get, to get the connective tissue off. Yeah, is that a hat? So yeah, here we got some sinews and things stuck on here. So I'll pull these off now. If I were to run it through another bowl, I generally get it. It generally ends up being over clogged and it just takes forever. So better to clean it before it needs, before it gets all clogged up than to wait. Okay, I've got everything uh, ground and cold. Um, and now I've mixed up some good bacteria and these guys uh, will put the right amount of lactic acid and other things in the sausage. Essentially what I'm doing is I'm putting these good bacteria in so that they eat all the bacteria food in the um, in, in, in the back in the sausage leaving cured meat. So this will help uh, drive out or outcompete the bad bacteria. Stick it into this tub. Okay, pop that back in the freezer. Luckily, it's cold enough outside that I've been able to put all of my um, my frozen meat from my deer previously outside in a cooler. So I pour in my my mixture. And I want to make sure that that gets everywhere because I don't want any large bits that aren't inoculated with this good bacteria. I want the good bacteria in everywhere. So I'm breaking up any frozen bits here. So I had to uh, modify my filling thing because the Never mind the music there. The, um, the KitchenAid mixer, it was smearing, it was crushing all the different uh, granules of meat, um, which is not really what you want. You want to compress them together into the casing. And it was smearing them into a gray kind of goop, which is not what you want. So, I have at the top of a vinegar container, uh, which is the right diameter to accept my fibrous fillings. And then I made a plunger that fits exactly in here. Now I take my casing, get the excess water off. I'm sorry about the background music. Luckily it's all public domain. So then this goes on. Yeah! Yeah! And I work the casings down. Obviously, I'd like to have a longer, smoother yeah. horn. That'd make it easier to get as much of the casing on there as I can. But, I didn't have access to go buy more stuff, right? I had to make it, so this is what I came up with. I could probably make something out of PVC if I had access to it. Yeah. That would work even better. All right. Now I got a couple more folds of casing on here. This is kind of tedious. Hey, Mish Paving. Now, I take my funnel, hold it in this hand, put meat in, use my plunger. It actually works really smoothly to push plugs of meat down into the into the casing. The only thing is I have to make sure I squeeze it nice and tight. Otherwise there's air hold. It's one of the nice things about this fibrous casing is it has uh, it's pre-pricked so the air pockets really don't exist. It has plenty of venting for the air. They're fairly forgiving. I've only ripped one and it was near the top so it wasn't a big deal. So I'm getting about a pound, a pound and two ounces in each of these or so. A little over a pound. Um, some of that's water, some of that will dehydrate away. Um, 
or smoke away, I imagine, which helps keep it preserved. So I imagine these will end up being about a pound each. I don't know if the video is clear enough, but if you look closely, you can see white specks appearing on the sides, and those are, that's a uh, liquid pushing out through the, the vents. I'm gonna leave myself about just a couple inches. And I give it a tighten down and squeeze. Tighten it down a little more. And now it's ready to be tied. And now once they're stuffed, I take and hang them from a little loop here. So I hang this. Sorry, my string just broke, of course, right? When I decided to put it on video. Uh, so my, I hang it from this string. I take another loop, leave myself a couple inches of tail, and then I wrap. And this tamps down and compresses. Luckily, these fibrous casings, which are made out of plant material, are very forgiving, especially for a first-time sausage stuffer like myself. Now, just do a square knot, and then I loop um, the loop end one more time, just to give it a little extra pull, so it's not going to pull out. And then I release it. For so now I have my stuffed sausage. It's got the pre-made loop on this end and my made loop on this end. And now it goes into the uh, hydration chamber. <clears throat> and now I'm hanging them in this, well, this is my dehydrator, but I've got a pan of water down here over a pilot light. Um, so that keeps it at a nice 80, 85 degrees in here. And with the water pan, it humidifies the whole area. So these are the ones I made last night. And now I'm hanging in the back here, uh, the new ones from today. And I do transfer, like this is what I made. This is what I made yesterday. And now this is not necessarily the, the best way. The best way is to have hooks on the top. But since this isn't really a made for making sausage, I'm just making do. So the sausages have been uh, fermenting for about 36 hours, meaning the good bacteria should have defeated all of the bad bacteria. So right now I'm just prepping them to go into, yes, yes, yes. Um, prepping them to go into the smoker. Um, but I got the smoker going outside with some apple wood from, uh, shh, from an apple tree that came down. And uh, I'll get these things strung up. And then uh, pop them out over the fire. Now here in the smoker, at about uh, 90 degrees, I've got all the sausages hanging over some apple wood and ice water to keep them nice and humid and cool. Nothing fancy. Hey! Okay. Bye bye! Uh, hi! Well, thanks for watching. Uh, obviously things look a little different now. Um, you can see how much bigger he is. And now there's this one. And we have been uh, really derelict in getting our, our videos out. And this is kind of part of the reason. Yeah, huh? This is. Setz dich auf den Po. Auf den Po. Hey, auf den Po. Uh, so, this is part of the reason, these two have been keeping me really busy, as you can see. Anyway, so one of the things. I I wanted to mention, thanks for watching. Um, it was uh, a year, over a year ago since I got this video together. Um, and I'm just getting it up uh, and edited now. Shh, okay, okay, good, okay. And as you can see, it's really hard to do stuff around here with these guys. And so they're going into day three. And I'll be able to get a lot more work done. This is great, but that also means um, <laughs> we need to professionalize what we're doing a little more, um, and that means your support. And if you've been watching uh, Food Mageddon and you're already at this point, um, I hope you've gotten a few hours' enjoyment out of it. Dad's gonna knock down the computer. So, as you may or may not know, 
this is an actual nonprofit. This isn't a hobby for me. This is actually my job. And a lot of our money comes from uh, grants and things like that. But we are starting to really push and open up uh, to have the community that watches and enjoys our content um, support us. So we have started a Patreon page, uh, patreon.com slash lowtechinstitute. And that goes for supporting the staff hours it takes to make videos and podcasts and put out all this stuff that, you know, the, the vast majority of people that interact with us see. And so if you are in a position where you can become part of the community that's supporting us, um, we'd ask you to check out our Patreon page. That's patreon.com slash low tech institute, all one word. And we have, you know, three bucks a month. Even three bucks a month is a huge help for us. It helps get our staff freed up so that we can make more videos. The staff, yeah. Get the staff freed up uh, so we can make more videos, uh, make more podcasts, get more content out there for you to see and enjoy. So if you're, again, if you're in a spot to help us out, please consider joining uh, the community that's supporting us. Um, and uh, otherwise, continue to enjoy all of our videos and stuff um, online. Please share us if you like us, uh, subscribe, and I hope to have a lot more videos out um, this summer and through the coming period. Um, the, more, the more support we get, the more uh, time our staff has uh, to do this sort of thing. So thank you so much. We really appreciate you watching. And um, we will be wrapping up Food Again in the next episode. Uh, we'll talk about how well we did, uh, where we didn't do so well, what we would improve, and the lessons we learned in a year goodbye. of trying to grow all our own food. Can you say goodbye? Goodbye. Bye. Und du willst es schließen? Hier, kannst du dir auf der Rückseite, ist eine rote Knopf, kannst du den roten Knopf drücken? Auf der Rückseite, Rückseite, nein, nicht auf dem Bildschirm, auf der Rückseite des Fotoapparats. Das ist ein roter Licht, ein roter, mm, hier. Dieser, kannst du diese drücken hier? Tut, tut. Und aufschalten.